Right, do you want to get better at Warzone? Have you always wondered what the pros do in order to win their games consecutively? There are tips and tricks here in this video, 11 of them, which will give you a little bit of detail and an insight to improve your gameplay. We're not talking about that standard autopilot gameplay where you just monotonously play. We're talking about consciously adapting your thought process and showing you through examples in this video to enhance your gameplay. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe and look forward to the top 11 tips and tricks that pros do in Warzone. <laughs> The Gulag. So, if you look here right now, everyone should go to the middle and look to the right. Nine times out of ten, every single player goes to the left. Alright? I'm not even lying to you right now. If you want to increase your gameplay, you want to get better at the game, when it comes down to the Gulag, especially within Season 4, which I dread to say is one of the worst Gulag setups because it has crossbow, sniper, melee, things like that. Always, always try and focus on running to the middle first and then trying to take your opponent out on your right, which means they go left. But this literally is something that I recommend because nine times out of 10, they always run to the left. For example, running to the middle, I've still got the same shirt on, meaning that this happened all in the same day, okay? All right, so I get to the middle. You hear the footsteps on my left, but still wait, wait. Where the fuck is this kid gone? And he pokes. I'm just saying I had that whole side under control and it was just literally obvious. I go into the middle again, pre-aim the position. The guy actually really luckily got a good shot on me, but I still put that effort in. Now, my lobbies are really difficult. Skill-based matchmaking, SBMM, meaning that you have high KD and things like that. You go up against good players. So, you know, not all the time do you actually have really easy gulags. As you already know, gulags are all about perfect timing. Parkour and stealth. Using stuns, knives, sticks, whatever you want to use is extremely impressive to get your positioning on top point, meaning that you literally can have so much control over the enemy. Look at this, double stunned and it made a double assassination. Pretty bloody impressive. Yes, the sticks came into play to increase the speed. All right, that did have a big part. But being able to correctly utilize your parkour skills, knowing when to jump, when to bob and weave, when to throw a C4, when to jump behind things, you know, going out your way to consciously learn the map will make you so much bloody better at the game. You literally will have so much more control over all of your gameplay as a full entirety you know looking at every scenario being able to understand the speeds the leverage when to jump and when to bob and weave parkour and stealth is something that will make your gameplay incredibly better doing quests or doing missions throughout the map to make sure your team has more money and don't forget there are so many different ones now that literally are utilized in different ways for example one of the new ones which we don't have footage of right now is where you will activate it go to a buy station you can either get a self revival buy your teammate back in if you're super clever about it imagine three of you are dead out of a quad team well one person goes collects it gets in the vehicle rushes buys the buy station all of a sudden one person yeah, stays in the sky and the other guy again goes buys another one. Well, he gets to land in instantly and you could do hot potato. Yeah. And just hot potato buy all your teammates in for free. And don't forget, every time you do another quest, um, you get multiplier of money and everything is great. Doing quests is one of the most important things that I can ever, ever stress about. And so many people underestimate the gameplay when it comes down to doing bounties doing scavengers doing you know lots of these things if you want to get extra kills as well you could do the one that uh, the king where everyone knows where you are on the map that's a really good way to sort of prime a team in if you get into a good position a team come running in the running line and then boom you've just taken out a free team and got extra money on top of getting your multiplier well actually your whole team are actually still alive <laughs> Positioning so and ever. gatekeeping. So I'm gonna Basically, go right I'm it's where you look at the top left of the map sky. and the circle has that white line. You see this, the bucket here. The bucket is right here. And no one can see you. And there's a deeper bucket right over by there as well to where no one can even see you. 
and you have the head glitch through a mountain line well above the, that person. So, um, I'm just going to wait here. This is one of the best positions to run into that gatekeep in that particular area. Being able to get positioning on a player will be able to make sure that you get easy kills like this truck kill. You'll be able to put yourself in areas where you know people will easily cross because they have to because of the gas. Thinking consciously about positioning is something that most players don't do because they just want to go and get the kills. And obviously they go for the win, so they do the secures and things like that, which by the way, does help with positioning. But people don't consciously know what type of players there are. You almost have to read the map. It's like when you're cooking a meal. If you look at the back of the packaging, it says 12 minutes, but let's be right. Sometimes, just sometimes, it's 13 minutes. Sometimes it's 14. Sometimes it's a little bit under. Depends on how your cooker works. Each and every one's different in unique ways, if you know what I mean. So positioning is RNG random number generator. This is me playing with Jeff Leach, the voice of Ghost, the actual voice actor of Ghost. He got instantly killed because he rotated a little bit too fast up the hill. But look at my positioning. Instantly having the head glitch through distance and just eliminating many different enemies. Loadouts. Now, I was using the bow earlier. And I actually have a very, very interestingly good bow. Probably the best of its kind. And I'm kind of known for being this guy that can use these nunchucks and the bows and annihilate teams seamlessly and easily. Now, the loadout here is just a test. Being able to understand how the range damage, accuracy, mobility and control works down to a T is something that, you know, takes a little bit of time to just be able to pick up any gun and just make it work. And I'm talking about a difference between multiplayer work and a difference between Warzone. For example, there's the P90 here. Absolutely atrocious in Warzone, in my opinion. But I still made one that worked. I got the dub with it. Got the dub with the crossbow. People doubt the crossbow in all sorts of shapes and sizes. But your loadout, you really need to be able to look at a gun and know the difference between the accuracy damage range and what is the priority. That will take time. That will take YouTube videos. Don't be reliant on other people to do the work for you. Try and really experiment with what works. But remember, Warzone is all about range and about control, and about accuracy. Back in the day, meaning season one, vehicles were pretty good. They would actually take a lot more damage, and they would splatter a lot more players, and it was times where even in the final circle, people would actually utilize vehicles to get that win. Personally, they were the best of times, because it made different opportunities for players to play in different various ways. and. I liked it. I think it worked. Putting a trophy system on also is very clever for you as well, being able to have control over the map. But vehicles is a skill and an art form in itself more than it's ever been before. And no, not to splatter people. Just because that was quite cool, we included that clip. But it's to be able to prime people out of their location. Imagine that you are a temporary king. You are one of the kings on the map. People everywhere know where you are. And all of a sudden, they're in the building. Then suddenly, they come out the building, but your teammate, he's not on the map. Well, now your teammate has got that easy as clutch kill, but it's all about, again, positioning, knowing when to rotate, how to rotate, and how to prime the enemy, having full control over your rotation, utilizing a vehicle. Restock. I'm using this as an example why the pros use it, is because you could be up against a hacker, a, a guy that has incredible aim assist, but stuns over ghost is something that I prime myself or pride myself in so bloody much because instantly you stun an enemy, you've got that kill. That guy is dead. That guy's frozen in time. He has no other choice but to die. There are situations where you will die with a stun because you either stun yourself or you'll, you'll make a mistake or they have that special perk on that basically doesn't need stuns. But restock, you also get that C4. That man had EOD. But I tell you now, if I never hit that second C4, that man wouldn't have died instantly there. So being able to consciously know that I have an infinite amount of C4s, I have an infinite amount of uh, stuns, you know, just works so well hand in hand with your teammate to be able to just eliminate enemies seamlessly fast and being able to have full control. Basically, you are like the caddy to a golfer. You're there helping in every way possible, being able to just take out enemies after enemies just using that restock. Even if you had throwing knives, throwing knives take out three plates instantly. Missed the stun. Oh, missed the stun. Actually did actually hit someone surprisingly. Uh, but now I don't have to panic because I can now retreat. And guess what? I've got another stun cooking as well. And 
That's the sad truth about it, is that restock is something that helps you in every way possible. And there are so many examples that I wish I could give you about why to use restock. Give it a go. Do not sleep on the drone. Literally, the drone is the most amazing piece of equipment that ever is to play. You could put C4s on it. You could fly into like prime locations and blow people up and take out teams. It doesn't always work as it used to. But what you could do is, is just literally have two versions. You see 100% of enemies at all times. You could provisional mark to give your team an area of where they are. You could start making them go on the map, knowing where they are doing. There's a general consensus of enemies over here. There's five over here. There's five over this. There's five over this. And you can also talk about the degrees. Instantly uh, told them, marked them. Like, if you bash through the door, jumped and looked sharp right at Examza. If you bash through the door, yeah. All and there. then Joe Exotic goes and gets the kill. Brilliant. And that is the drone gameplay. Being able to utilize drone gameplay is so superior. For example, you have to smash the windows. They can't go out the windows. I don't actually know why I didn't do this. Maybe I have to go down. There we go, smash the window for me, and I'm instantly able to fly out. Now, I had to mark that. You see how it has a little X? That means that you have to do the physical mark, the physical ping. So you could still mark someone that is a ghost player. That's pretty bloody impressive. Look at him. Look, I'm able to tell all of the enemies where they are, and instantly my whole team that are being, I dare say, completely owned in every way, I come in with a drone and save the day through simply just telling them where they are. Look. Casper, this guy, he, I do the physical mark, instantly giving them that quick advantage. Quad comes up behind. I go, right, where is this quad? And then now I give clarity. He gives a physical mark. I'm on my way. It takes a little bit of time. But now I'm able to scope out everything and give intel. Four there, yes. Four there. One has ghost. One has ghost. One has ghost. Look at that. So I can now clarify and give intel. And I can tell them that all four in there, we're just going to go in there and absolutely kill them. Next, use the barricade. Barricades are for clutch gameplays to block different types of running lines for enemies. You block a running line, you intimidate the enemy. By pro pro playing with the barricade, you are literally saying, hey, I don't give a damn who you are. I'm creating my own area and come and get me. Look at this. I have full map control over this centralized location next to the rock. I've given myself another rock. And now I'm in the gatekeep. You can see by the white line on the circle, no one can actually take me out right now the amount of clutch gameplays that i've done with the barricade are second to none this barricade would have intimidated people as well as you can see they're rotating into the uh, the storm right there reviving knowing when to revive at the right time look at this m4 and we've got mr melvin lying down or m4 blocks the bullets and we pick him up but you know exactly the line of sight being able to pick up your enemy at the right time and asking your teammate to get into the correct position is vital. The amount of times that you have the screaming kid, oh, pick me up, pick me up, and then you get killed is just completely unreasonable. Just ask your teammate to position themselves in a certain area. And when they're good enough, they'll do it naturally. And if they, do you know what? Sometimes you just can't help the truth that you are already dead before you've even had the chance of being picked up. And also utilizing the technique of self-revive and tapping your enemy at the last second, that is also extremely important to do. A little pro tip if you didn't know that already. The gas. I've done a video on the gas, but you can always go check it out. The video is on the thumbnail right now on the screen. And you can go ahead and go click the link in the description and master how to understand the gas. The gas is a very, very interesting one. And by the way, just include this in there. If it's not done yet, I will make a gas video. I don't actually know if it's been done. I'm pretty sure I did a video on it or was doing a video on it. But utilizing the gas in every way shape or form for gatekeeping which again gatekeeping is where the line the white line you know exactly based on timing as well if you look at the bottom left below the map you know in two or three seconds the map's going to move and the circle's going to come in and the circle's going to move this is actually really old gameplay on season two that you're witnessing right now and the gas didn't the circle didn't actually move with the gas but using the gas mask and knowing when to move at the right time is super important even to the point where if you know your gas mask animation is going to do something run into the gas early then stay 
in the running line of the gas. Like, for example, ran in the gas right now early. The guy doesn't know where I am. He can't even see me properly because I'm actually in the gas, which is making it really hard for him to be able to see. He thinks I'm in this particular area because of it's obvious. I'm even in the gas. Look how long I'm in the gas for right now. I've now moved out of the running line of the gas. Okay. And now I've just taken out that enemy. And that was bloody lucky. That was lucky because I didn't even really see that enemy properly. Conclusion, there's a bloody lot of examples I could actually show. And to be honest with you, I'll be having more Instagram clips to where I'll just use those as good examples throughout the video. But becoming God level is utilizing and understanding psychologically all of those tips. Go through it again and just kind of write it down on a notepad, have a little look and think, right, okay, today I'm going to use the barricade and I'm going to have a play with it. I'm going to purposely set myself up in a situation and utilize that. I'm going to put restock on. Why? Because I want to be able to understand how the stuns work. All right, I'm going to put a counter to stuns and gas or maybe i'll use the gas grenades you know sit there become god level and really feel enthralled and confident in your gameplay to master every single thing in these pro tips especially the gulag in season four and bear in mind there'll be another gulag video available for you to check out there if there is actually one available now as well link will be in the description make sure to hit that like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and thank you so there you have it you've learned really good initial tips and tricks that have enhanced your gameplay. Now, not all of them are gonna resonate well with you and not all of them are gonna be instantly working because it takes time. As you guys know, experience isn't done in one day, subject to what it is. Of course, here at Warzone and the Battle Royale with its poetic license of anything can happen, you're gonna be able to utilize these things and force the randomness in your favor. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nitro Luke. This is the God Level YouTube channel. I hope that you subscribed and pressed the like on the video. Let me know what type of video you want me to do in the next one in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next God Level video.